What is going on YouTube? Jay here from MJ Tech. Today coming with another car stereo and this is for a Mercedes C300 2009 model. This is a plug and play type of radio meaning that it was made specifically for this vehicle. I got it from eBay. I believe that with the optional wireless CarPlay and the expedited shipping, I think it was the total uh, $635 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it took about seven days to arrive so it was fairly quick considering that this is coming directly from china uh, this is a 10.25 inch car stereo and again it is made specifically for the c300 all the way from uh, 2008 up to 2010. so this one here guys uh, comes with a very decent processor it is uh, quad core but it is made by uh, qualcomm and it is called the snapdragon 625 it comes with uh, 16 gigs of internal storage, 2 gigs of RAM, Android 10.0, and again, it is a 10.25 inch display. I believe it has a resolution of 1280 by 480, so it is almost 720p display. And knowing that this is for a car, that's quite high. Uh, you know, we're not gonna be as close to the screen as we would on a smartphone. So 480p uh, for this particular stereo is more than enough. So of course, it's gonna have the speedometer on there, tachometer, it's gonna have um, a whole bunch of information displayed on here. So everything that we have inside of the box should be enough to get the installation completed. Uh, these are the keys to the car. And I also got, uh, by the way, this car belongs to my friend at work and I recommended uh, this wireless camera. It makes it a lot easier for installation. And I have it on my Honda Pilot and it works perfectly well. I have used it now for about a year. I have no complaints whatsoever. And uh, this came from my local retail store, Best Buy. It was about $129.99. But there are many options out there when it comes to rear view cameras. So I'm gonna leave this up to you guys on whatever you wanna choose uh, for your car stereo. And uh, yes, it is compatible with this particular one. Pretty much any backup camera will be compatible, including the factory one. So I know that question is gonna pop up. If your Mercedes has a factory camera, you will be able to hook it up with this uh, car stereo. So very cool. And uh, here opening the box, we have a little phone covering everything. We even have a little uh, installation guide here with a whole bunch of detailed photos and pictures. I know a lot of you guys uh, you know, find it a little easier to do installations with, uh, with pictures. So again, very detailed. Uh, here we have the display. And this is again the 10.25 inch display. And what I like about it is that uh, comparing it to a video that I saw from 2018 is that now the display looks darker, uh, giving it a more high-end uh, look, especially when the vehicle's turned off. Uh, sometimes we have seen the uh, displays uh, that they have a, a lot of glare. It looks like a glass or a mirror. And I really don't like that, but this one here has that uh, darker tone and I do like it. And again, this is a 10.25 inch display and it comes with Android 10. You get the wireless CarPlay uh, with it as well. So on the back here, we're gonna have access for the um, SD card, as we can tell right there. And this one here comes also with uh, 4G capabilities, uh, 4G LTE, so you can install a micro uh, SIM on the back side. Okay, very cool. And here we have the main connections for the radio. We have what appears to be uh, here a USB um, adapter. We have the mic in case you want to have the mic uh, separated. Uh, and I use the vehicle's uh, mic if you have one already built in, then you can uh, hook it up here. And of course we have the 4G antenna connection, the GPS, you have another uh, harness that goes connected on here. And uh, I gotta say guys, it looks uh, very nice and modern. We know that most 2021 vehicles nowadays, they have uh, this type of radio that looks like a tablet attached to the dashboard. Uh, maybe it's not my uh, favorite you know method I, I prefer the old styles a little more but that's just my personal preference uh, here we have all the harnesses that comes uh, for installation it looks like a lot to me all of this should be just a plug and play then we have here uh, the cover uh, right now the uh, screen that is installed by factory on this Mercedes uh, C300 is the one that pops up automatically when you turn on the vehicle. So now it's gonna be permanent. It's not gonna go up and down any longer. So this is a cover for that. And uh, here we have more wires and harnesses for insulation. Inside of the box, we have nothing else. So let's go ahead and jump right to it. 
and get this thing done. All right, guys, so obviously here we are now inside of the car, and uh, well, the first thing that you must do to remove the screen is uh, you must lift it. Uh, if you have this dial screen, let me show you here. So, of course, this is the one that uh, goes up and down, and so the first thing you must do is press the button, lift it, and then you're gonna remove these two rubber pieces. You can simply use your fingers for this. All right, so to remove here this vent, what I did that worked for me is that I grabbed a size, uh, this is a, a size two um, Allen driver, and I sticked it in here like so, and then I press uh, on the clip that is inside here, right behind it, and then with a plier, I grabbed it and then pull it. And that's how this vent comes out. Again, all you do is place it in here, push the clip inside, press it, and then you pull it with the pliers. It makes it a little bit easier. And here it is. We have the vent now. Just pull it and then close your radio again. Turn it off. You have three wires in total. You have one at the bottom of this vent one on the bottom at the front side and one on top okay so now in this step we have four screws that need to be removed and they are in my case they are t20s we have one right here we got one here one there we have to remove the what they call the command unit and one there again for me t20s worked also, make sure not to mix up the screws. The smaller ones came from up top, and the longer ones came from the command unit, which are the ones at the bottom. So make sure you guys don't get them mixed up. So now, once you remove the screws, you just simply lift up here from this section of the radio. From both sides, you lift it up, and it's gonna pop right out. Just pull it, be gentle. And on the back side here, we're gonna have two connections one on this side and one on this side this is for your motorized system and again this is for your uh, screen connection our next step here is to remove now the command unit after removing those screws now we have these two clips for that I use this pry opening tool and we have these two clips that you simply lift up I'm not sure if you guys are seeing this but they are right there it's hard to miss and the same thing here for the other side again we can see it right there just go underneath it and lift them don't be uh, too hard on them you can crack them and now the command unit is ready to be pulled now I'm really trying to multitask here I have the camera on my lap and I just want to show you here how to remove this uh, harness this is the main harness that goes on the back side of the radio all you really need to do is kind of lift it like so and then you're gonna see how the whole thing just starts coming off. Again, just lift this little handle right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but the handle's like right there. Just lift it up and the main connection comes right off. Those of you with HK or XM radio, you will have these two wires, these two orange wires on the corner of the main harness that we removed from the command unit. There's a clip right above it. Just lift the clip and remove these two wires again there's like a little tiny clip right there right behind it lift it and these two wires are going to come together and when removed this is what it looks like all right guys so this is where things start getting a little interesting in my opinion uh, we're going to start connecting now the aftermarket stuff which is the radio that i showed you guys before and uh, we start with this uh, big old harness uh, yes i know it looks uh uh, super super big, but uh, it is part of what we have to do. So uh, The first thing that we must do is connect this side of the harness Okay, we're gonna plug it in here. So If we look closely This thing goes like this Okay, and so just follow the connections on the inner side of this and it's actually quite simple and then just snap it on like so and there we go all right guys so now we grab the other end of that aftermarket harness 
we just plugged in one side to the factory connector here so we grabbed the other end and I don't know if you guys remember that um, two orange wires that we removed uh, earlier well now you're gonna place them on this same side in which we took it out from the other side which is this we just simply clip it on here like so to the very corner of it like it was on the other uh, main connector here of the car and voila it goes on like this I don't know if you guys get the idea there's gonna be like a little uh, pin on the connector itself here on the actual wire that goes facing up and again it goes here towards the very corner now before we hook up the command unit here to this harness which is again the bottom part that we removed earlier we need to run this power cord that comes all together here with this uh, humongous harness it comes wrapped so once you unwrap it this part here which is going to power the upper unit you need to run it along here so you need to have it to where it's not uh, on the way here of the vent otherwise when you put that uh, vent uh, cover then it's going to uh, pinch the wire so you need to do it like underneath here through a little opening that is available and then you're gonna fish it and then bring it up this side and well guys I was able to find a very sweet spot for it I went all the way to the back here and then there's an opening right around this area and I was able to fish the wire if you look closely here I'm not sure if you guys can see that but the wire is not on the way of the vent gasket okay of course we're going to rearrange this a little better but this is basically what I did this is your main power unit here uh, or your main power uh, harness for the upper side of the screen just again look closely and copy and paste guys our next step now is to connect this uh, uh, rectangular uh, metallic box that came with your new radio and I don't know if you guys remember when we first removed the upper unit here it came with this uh, connection which uh, we removed obviously and that will get connected right in here now just uh, pay attention to the pattern it goes in like so I'm trying to multitask here with the camera and at the same time um, plugging this in but if you're able to do it with one hand which I can't uh, again basically you connect uh, this wire here and then I'll show you where to connect these other two in a second so there we go I just plugged it in and uh, these two wires one would go to this um, harness which we have right here it has a lot of the um, connectors for rear view cameras and and uh, amplifiers and whatnot so you see this connector right here that's where uh, this wire that I'm about to show you goes connected so I'm just trying to focus this the best way possible but if you come back here to this box you see this wire it gets connected here okay there's the male and the female and then the little red wire okay the one that says VCC 12 plus volts okay this one gets connected to the part where it says uh, DVR but that goes here in the power harness if you look here there's a red wire one says camera uh, 12 volts plus that's for your backup camera but then there's one that says uh, DVR power and again this is coming from this harness here so what you're gonna do it uh, plug it in here okay to the one that's coming from the metallic box so again the DVR power goes connected here to the VCC 12 plus okay and one side is going to be the male the other side here is going to be the female so it is just a plug-and-play scenario and so this is what your end result should look like there we have the main wire which we unplugged from the original uh, unit then it goes into this metallic box this red wire goes connected here to the uh, cable coming out of this uh, power harness and we connect it into the DVR power okay and then we have this other little harness that came included with your radio 
and that's where uh, you're going to plug this wire that says LVDS in. You're going to plug it in here. And that's it. So now that little metallic box that I've been talking about, I hit it back there. So I ran the main wire right behind this metal piece. And then I was able to tuck it back there. And so here we have again that connection that I mentioned before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use electrical tape to put these together as I'm not going to use any of these right now. This is for like aftermarket stuff. So I'm just going to uh, leave the cap on first of all so that it doesn't uh, you know make any uh, contact here with the metal back there. And I'm going to just use a little bit of electrical tape so that there's no vibration noises. And I'm just going to leave this thing sticking out. This is going to go connected to the main display uh, which we're going to do later on and uh, yeah just make sure that uh, you use a little bit of electrical tape it is not required but I just recommend it alright so the next two uh, wires or pieces that you want to get hooked up is the GPS antenna which comes included with your kit and the GPS antenna has like a double adhesive tape all you do is remove that film that is on top of it it is red in color and I placed it right underneath here the dash so that way I get the best signal reception and the same thing goes here for the 4G LTE antenna I put it right beside it right underneath here the dashboard again it has double adhesive tape pre-installed all you got to do is remove that film and then your connections will come out like this which is later going to be installed on your radio alright guys so now to run those two USB ports that came with the bottom harness here uh, we have the well they are labeled USB 1 and USB 2 I had to remove this uh, lower plastic by removing this one uh, bolt right here okay which is located down here I'm not sure if you guys can see that it's kind of hard to see but the bolt is right here so once you remove this this panel can be pulled down and that's how I was able to fish the uh, two USB uh, ports in case you want to connect your smartphone or whatever accessory it is also you can do software updates with this USB port as well and again they are labeled USB 1 and USB 2 that's how I was able to get them through but I'm pretty sure you can use your own imagination to make it look better if you really don't like these wires to be sticking out you can maybe run it inside of the glove compartment or just do something different Okay, so now after running those wires that I just showed you, the USB 1 and USB 2, now we are able to basically tuck in the rest of the harness like I did right here. And of course, we're going to connect this main harness on the back side of the control unit right here. And uh, we have this wire as well, make sure you don't forget. And these two, they go connected um, on the back side of this unit. And then we push everything back in and hopefully it'll be nice and snug once everything is hidden. Alrighty, so it looks like we got everything connected back here uh, nice and flush. So everything should be able to go back inside here. Uh, let's try it out. Alright guys, after connecting uh, this unit, the bottom unit, I decided to test here the upper screen. So I pre-connected everything. It is not yet fully uh, done of course. I just plugged in the wires on the back side of the display uh, just to test it a little bit and now the screen is working. Uh, the issue I was having, well it's not that it wasn't working, but you have this um, NTG uh, menu and that's for uh, this part here so that when you use your FM radio and, and whatnot then you will have that information display here on the screen now if yours is not working correctly and you are installing this on a 2008 all the way to 2010 uh, Mercedes uh, Benz uh, C300 then you have to go here to where it says uh, settings I'm gonna try to focus this the best way possible and then you scroll down after getting into settings and you click here on factory you have to enter this passcode they'll give it to you on the uh, manuals it is uh, 190627 and you click enter so we do just that so 190627 enter and boom now we are here in the uh, factory settings okay so we go here into uh, display don't go into vehicle uh, well it is there by default 
Well, actually, yes, you can click on vehicle, but you're not going to mess with that. You're going to go here to where it says car display. And then here, you're going to have four different models. You can see it says 2016, 2016, uh, 2013 to 2015. So you're going to bypass all of this, and you're going to go down here. Uh, according to the um, settings here, they want you to go to the one that says half screen. And um, it is this one here. So it says... Um, NTG 4.7, uh, 800 by 480, uh, 7.0 inch, half screen from 2008, 2010. This is the one that you want to select. So once you select that, uh, you click OK. You go here to scan protocol. You're going to leave it uh, by default here on uh, type 4.5. I think that's what they uh, tell us to do here. So well, in this case, uh, this one is working with 4.5 but it says 4.0 let's try that one and see what happens so 4.0 and uh, now we go here into home let's see if it continues working and uh, apparently it is working so you can always change this um, afterwards but uh, right now we can see right there the radio station so if I press the button down here to change the radio station you guys can see that it is working so now we get everything displayed on here so again this is uh, important that you guys do this otherwise you're gonna have some issues with the display it's gonna give you like uh, funny lines and whatnot that's because it's not configured correctly so just keep that in mind uh, and to be honest with you other than my rear view camera which I'm gonna have a wireless one installed I'm gonna figure this one out we have here uh, this is basic all we got to do is connect the 12 volt uh, in to the uh, wire that uh, came here with the harness on the upper side we connect this to where it says rear camera and then we just got to find a ground for it and that's pretty much it this is the wireless one so it'll go um, you know it'll communicate with the other transmitter that goes back there in the trunk which is back here and that's it guys so this installation tutorial was mainly for uh, you know for the uh, radio itself but if you guys need a separate uh, wireless camera installation tutorial then uh, you know maybe I can ask uh, my co-worker if I can borrow his car again disassemble everything and uh, do another separate video for that but today we are kind of running here out of time so I need to put everything uh, back together but I'll show you guys how to do it all right guys so a couple of hours have gone by uh, before I figured things out here um, it's actually more than I anticipated but in terms of the connection, uh, there's not much that uh, really needs to be done. It just took me mostly, uh, or most of the time, it was on the rear side. Uh, to be honest, I've, I've barely ever you know, worked on Mercedes before. But uh, this one here, again, uh, you know, it was my first one. And I think it's going to be my last one for a while. But anyways, don't get discouraged. I'm, I'm just going to try to explain it to you the best way possible. So I got this wireless camera and at first i thought that i needed to connect the ground or the negative terminal that comes with it but no all you really have to do is just connect here the positive to where it says 12 uh 12 plus volts camera this is the one coming from this harness right here which is the one that we ran along from the bottom and so you connect uh, the video to where it says rear camera okay just like i did here and uh, don't worry about this wire that says uh, trigger output this one here okay it's like a lighter brown I would say don't worry about that one uh, so basically we are done on this side and then on the back side of the car which I still have to do a little more well back here I took the panel out okay there's a couple videos on how to do this and um, I simply drilled a hole here on the bottom side where the uh, latch is for the car and I think I'm going to end up placing the camera here on the side uh, because it's kind of uncomfortable to open the door uh, so I might rearrange this and put it on the side but by the way that I got it to work which is mainly what you want to see is that well I got the wire down here okay and uh, this is the transmitter that communicates with the front side I ran it through here okay which is this uh, uh, I don't know this panel uh, on the side of the vehicle and then I connected the ground for this transmitter right here 
where you have the fuse box there's going to be like a little 10 millimeter bolt down here that's where i connected the ground and then the positive i used uh, after a lot of research this is what took me a lot of time i used um, the uh, number 15 uh, fuse i uh, pinched it on one side and uh, that's how i got it to work properly and now I have a uh, reverse camera. So when I place the vehicle in reverse, it is working. So again, this is the best way that I can uh, recommend you guys to do it. Uh, work for me. All right guys, so this is day number two working on this Mercedes uh, C300. I have to admit they are a headache, but I was kind of uh, expecting that, you know, any, uh, you know, German car, Mercedes, BMW, you name it, they all gonna give you a headache when you're trying to do aftermarket stuff. Anyways, I'm going to try to make this simple. I've been breaking my head. Uh, this is the second time I uh, take all of this apart. I had it all together. And uh, the issue I was having is that here from the command unit, I was getting the FM and AM and uh, all that good stuff uh, to work. You know, I could hear the audio. However, everything coming from this upper unit here, I wasn't getting any audio here now at first I thought that it had to do with these uh, you know this thing comes with a special connector here in case you have the um, it is what they call the NTG 4.0 or the 4.5 in this case I have the 4.5 in this vehicle I confirmed it I, I thought uh, or excuse me no I have uh, uh, hold on I have the 4.0 sorry about that yeah it is the 4.0 so at first I said, well, maybe is that I have something going on here to where it's not uh, communicating properly. And this is the harness that came with the aftermarket radio, okay? But then I noticed something. I noticed this connection here. With me, this was unplugged. So it comes in two separate connections. I'm going to try to take it apart here. Um, well, it, it is kind of hard, but anyways, these two, they go together, okay? That's how I got... Uh, you know audio coming from uh, from this unit to the control unit okay that's how I got it to work uh, things like Bluetooth uh, CarPlay uh, even downloading let's say YouTube nothing coming from here I will hear on the speakers and so that um, you know brought me to where I had to again connect these two together and now everything is working great so if you are having issues just check this wire that comes in the aftermarket radio there's no manuals or anything here that specifies about this make sure they go together and boom everything is working great so now it is official time for reassembly Alrighty guys, so now we got everything working here with this Mercedes uh, C300 after approximately I would say one full day and about six hours on the other day uh, I just found out about that issue. I told you about make sure those two wires are connected Everything has been uh, reassembled as you can tell I do like the um, little plastic piece uh, the little gap filler that comes with it um, it kind of blends in very cool with the car and I have to tell you this is a very cool little unit is definitely an upgrade from what uh, used to be on here and uh, now we have things like the navigation that's working perfectly well and the issue I was having before is that let's say I wanted to play music from the internal memory um, I'm gonna put this in pause here for a second I couldn't listen to anything that was playing here on the speakers and it had to do because of that specific wire I mentioned to you guys before and uh, of course we have also the uh, control units uh, OS so for this you go into where it says NTG you click on there and then from here um, we move this little lever thingy um, by the middle console and uh, we can select here the uh, station let me just lower the volume here a little bit we can go back into FM of course and here you guys can hear that uh, we have uh, again the UI is exactly uh, the same as the one that uh, we used to see on the screen before and uh, yeah everything's working great if you want to go back into the radio's UI then you click on the screen and it'll take you back here uh, we have things like the uh, phone app 
uh, you have applications and yes I was able to download here uh, YouTube as you guys can tell and everything is working properly with that as well now keep in mind that for things like YouTube uh, you're gonna need a Wi-Fi connection so right now I'm connected here to my home's network and uh, yeah everything's working great uh, this radio, I mean, it comes with 2 gigs of RAM, which is sufficient to use things like uh, YouTube and, you know, to surf the radio uh, quite fast. It comes with the Play Store. You can log into it and, of course, uh, do whatever you need to do. Uh, it comes with a wireless CarPlay. Now, the wireless CarPlay, sometimes it works right off the bat. And sometimes uh, it makes me wait a little longer than usual. Uh, we do have uh, maps here for Google. So again, if you are connected, let's say via um, hotspot or whatever the case may be, you have internet on your car. Also keep in mind that this thing comes with, uh, with a little slot on the back for, uh, for a SIM card. So you can have services like AT&T, T-Mobile on here. And then if that's the case, you can use maps directly from here. Uh, we have Chrome. You can use this basically like a big tablet on here, including to uh, watch movies and stuff and yeah guys like i said it's a really cool unit let's go here on settings and you guys will see that in fact we have um android uh 10 let's go here into about let's see if this gives me the um software version and yes you guys can see it right there android 10. so again um i do like the ui there's a couple things you can change here from uh, factory so you had to enter your your code uh, I don't know if every unit comes with the same code, but these are for the, your factory settings and, and whatnot. You can even change here the uh, boot logo. Also, the wireless uh, rear view camera works perfectly well. Let me show you here. And it is made by this company called Echo Master. And look at this. When I move the steering wheel, the little guides here, they move as well. That's very cool. Okay, so that uh, again that camera is working properly as well and automatically shuts off you have to give it like two I would say between two and five seconds before it shuts off so again very very cool and uh, let's see what else we got on here I think that's pretty much it so again if you guys have any questions you know exactly what to do you just leave your comments below don't forget to like comment and share also click on the bell icon so you don't miss videos like this and if you want to see me installing these kind of radios on a different vehicle let me know and i can always find a vehicle so that way we can do a little tutorial uh thank you for watching guys and i'll see you on my next one